Hello everyone, my name is Kayla Hall. I am the Intact Practice Director here at CompuData. In this video, I will go over how to update 1099 transactions and vendor 1099 fields with an import file. If you are interested in learning more about 1099 um, vendor setup and 1099 reporting and forms, you can access our um, CompuData.com and we have a blog and we've got a series of topics that you can um, look through here. Um, so going into my intact environment, um, I'm going to be going navigating to vendors. Um, so you can see here that these three vendors have their 1099 information. Um, in the, the view, you can edit your view to include form 1099 type and form 1099 box, um, which is what I did here. And then you can always export to Excel or CSV um, if you need to reconcile or filter through the list. Um, if you wanted to update these fields manually within the UI of Intact, you could hit edit on the vendor record and un under additional info, click the hyperlink form 1099. And here is where you can filter through and delete, um, cha make changes as needed. Um, but I'm not going to do that today because I'm going to do it with an import file. Um, so going back. So right now we have a um, series of transactions for A1 Electric Company, which I will show you here. Um, let me just make sure inception to date. Um, this report was created using custom reports. I do have a filter for 10, 1099 um, is not equal to false, so only the 1099-able transactions. Um, for this video, I just wanted to share with you the A1 Electric Company. Um, so you can see here that we have 2020 and 2022 transactions all coded to uh, miscellaneous 1099 type box one. Um, so what we want to do is we're actually going to import the update for A1 Electric Company to NEC1. Um, and then a, another thing that we're going to do with this import is just update alpha insulation with NEC1, um, just their vendor form 1099 type defaults. Um, so with the same import file, you can actually accomplish both of those things. Uh, so going up into company, um, and you can do this at the top level or the entity level. Um, because all of the transactions were done at the entity level, you can do it at the entity level, but I'm going to go ahead and do it at the top level. So we're going to go to import data. We're going to scroll down and find um, vendor, vendor 1099 transaction update. Um, this is the hyperlink that you can download the template from. Um, and if you have pop-ups enabled, then they'll pop up here. Uh, I have one here that's color coded. So the light orange that you see is going to be required fields um, and the rest are not required, but highly recommended. So vendor ID I've populated here. Um, I've got my vendor name, alpha insulation. Um, I'm going to leave name 1099 blank because I don't want to make any updates to the 1099 name. Um, if you wanted to delete it, uh, the record on the transactions for any reason, then you would want to put in null here. Um, so null allows you to delete. Um, leaving it blank will just ignore that field for this for this mass import or mass update. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to change these to NEC1. Um, for alpha insulation, they don't have any transactions, so I'm actually going to put an N here. And I have this guide here to try to make it a little easier um, and visual. So we have A as a status if we wanted to update all bills and bill lines as 1099-able, regardless if they were historically marked as 1099-able or not. Um, y is only updating the bill and bill lines that are already marked as 1099-able, and then N is will not update any bills or transactions. Um, and then this is just a reminder. So for the CSV imported bills, you can mark bills as 1099-able if you import them as unpaid or partially paid, but not if you imported them as paid. Um, so if you imported any bills with a payment, uh, you know, fully paid, you cannot update those transactions using this import file. Um, you also can't update transactions that were done um, as, far to, as part of your cutover or any historical um, because they, those did not post to the GL. So only uh, transactions that have posted to the GL can be updated with this tool. Um, so I'll go ahead and then these two fields here, H and I, those are required if the update trans column is Y or A. So if we're updating transactions, then we do require a from date and to date. Um, so if those are not populated, you will get an error. So we're only going to go ahead and update um, 2022 transactions. Um, so go ahead and save as a CSV, comma delimited file. So go ahead and save that. Come back in, we'll import our update. 
and it was successful. So now if I navigate back to my AP vendor list, you'll see that now they're all listed as NEC box one. Um, if I navigate back to my custom report and I refresh that, you'll see that they change from miscellaneous one to now NEC one. So very, very simple. Um, if you needed to mass update transactions for the entire year, like we just did, um, you know, just a couple clicks. So hopefully this was beneficial and thank you for listening.